In this video, I'm going to introduce the retail inventory method. What is the retail inventory method and when should we use it? It's a way of estimating the cost of an organization's inventory, their merchandise. It's one of two methods used to estimate inventory costs. The other is the gross profit method, which I'm going to cover in another video. Why would an organization need to estimate the cost of their inventory? Why not just perform an inventory count? Organizations can use inventory estimation methods because they may need the value of inventory for things such as interim financial reporting. Inventory may need to be estimated if it's destroyed by a fire or other natural disaster. Even when a physical inventory count is performed, an inventory estimation method can be used to speed up the inventory count. That's because individuals counting the inventory could record the count and the retail price using a scanner. After the count is completed, an estimation method can be used to calculate the cost of the items counted. Finally, organizations may need to use inventory estimation methods to compare to the physical count, to test it for reasonableness. If the difference is material, it signals to management that they should investigate. These are the main reasons organizations may estimate the cost of their inventory. They are permitted to do so as long as the results estimate actual cost. How does the retail inventory method work? Well, before we move forward, we need to recall two concepts from introductory financial accounting. The first thing we have to recall is how we calculate cost of goods sold in a periodic inventory system. We'll use an example, Anita Inc., to demonstrate this concept. At the start of the year, Anita Inc. has opening inventory at cost of $32,600. During the year, they purchase $866,300 of inventory, again at cost. If we add together the opening inventory and the purchases, we get the inventory available for sale. This is all the inventory that the company has during the period to sell. $32,600 plus $866,300 is equal to $898,900, which is the available for sale inventory. At the end of the year, when we perform an inventory count, we determine that we have $28,500 of inventory still on hand. We assume that any inventory which is not on the shelf, not on hand, not included in the count, is sold or gone and therefore part of the expense called cost of goods sold. So, $898,900 available for sale minus the ending inventory of $28,500 is equal to a cost of goods sold of $870,400. Now, what if we switch this? What if we knew the cost of goods sold, but not the ending inventory? Would we be able to switch around the formula to calculate the ending inventory instead? And the answer is absolutely. Available for sale minus the cost of goods sold is equal to the ending inventory. So $898,900 of available for sale minus the cost of goods sold of $870,400 is equal to the ending inventory of $28,500. Whichever amount we have, we can solve for the one unknown number, either cost of goods sold or ending inventory. Remember this as we move through this video to address the retail inventory method. Now, the second thing we have to remind ourselves about is the use of vertical analysis on the income statement. We'll use Anita Inc. again. The company has the following information on their income statement. Sales of $1,280,000. Cost of goods sold of $870,400, which of course you must recognize because we just calculated it. Sales revenue of $1,280,000 minus cost of goods sold of $870,400 is equal to gross profit of $409,600. If we now apply vertical analysis, we divide all the amounts on the income statement by net sales. In this case, $1,280,000. For sales, $1,280,000 divided by itself multiplied by 100 is 100%. For cost of goods sold, $870,400 divided by $1,280,000 is equal to 0.68. Multiplied by 100, we get 68%. And for gross profit, $409,600 divided by $1,280,000 is equal to 0.32. Multiplied by 100, 32%. So 
What does this all mean? It means that the cost of goods sold, which is the cost of the inventory, is 68% of the sales value, sales revenue. What is sales revenue? It's inventory at the retail price. Think about it. It's all the units in inventory that we sold multiplied by their selling price. So sales revenue is equal to inventory at its retail price. What does this show? It shows that there is a relationship between the cost of inventory, which is the cost of goods sold, and the sales price of inventory, the retail value, which is sales revenue. How can we use this information in a retail organization? We can use this pattern, the relationship between the cost of inventory and the retail value of inventory, sales revenue, to estimate the cost of inventory. We can take the total selling price of the inventory on hand, its retail value, and convert it into the cost of inventory by using this ratio. How? Since we know that the cost of inventory is 68% of the sales revenue, which is the retail cost of inventory, if we only had the sales revenue of 1,280,000 and we knew the relationship was 68%, we can take the 68% and multiply it by the total sales revenue to determine the cost. 1,280,000 multiplied by 68% is equal to $870,400. We determine the cost of inventory using the ratio, the ratio of the cost of goods sold, the cost of inventory to the sales revenue the retail value of inventory. This is called the cost to sale ratio, and we'll be using this same concept when we explore the retail inventory method of estimating ending inventory. Both of these concepts, the calculation of ending inventory when we have the available for sale and the cost of goods sold, and the one from the income statement, which shows that there is a relationship between the cost of inventory, cost of goods sold, and the sales revenue, the retail value of inventory sold. Both of these will help us understand the retail inventory method and how it works. Now, let's get back to how we actually apply the retail inventory method. To use the retail inventory method, specific information is required. We need the total cost and the total retail value, which is the total selling price, of all opening inventory. We need the total cost and the total retail value of all the inventory purchased during the period, and we need the total actual sales revenue for the period. Let's use a basic example to demonstrate this method of estimating ending inventory. Singh Enterprises has the following information available on March 31st, the end of their first quarter. Beginning inventory has a total cost of $28,000 and a total selling price, retail value, of $40,000. The company purchased inventory during the quarter for a total of $126,000 at cost and $180,000 total retail value. They also checked their sales revenue account and determined that during the first quarter, they had sales revenue of $170,000, which is, of course, the inventory sold at its retail price. Using the retail inventory method, determine the cost of the ending inventory. We'll start by creating a chart with three columns. The first column is the description, second, cost of inventory, and third, retail value of inventory. Now we apply our understanding of the periodic inventory system and how we calculate ending inventory, the concept I demonstrated with Anita Inc. But we're going to apply it to the cost of inventory and the retail value of inventory. We start with the opening inventory. Total cost of opening inventory, $28,000. Total retail value, the selling price of all the opening inventory, if we sold it, is $40,000. We now add in the purchases. The cost of the purchases, $126,000. The retail value, which is of course the selling prices of all the purchases if we sold them, is $180,000. If we now add the opening inventory plus the purchases, we get the inventory available for sale, both at cost and at retail. $28,000 plus $126,000 is equal to $154,000. This is the cost of all the inventory which was available for sale during the quarter. Now we add the retail value of the opening inventory plus the retail value of the purchases to get the retail value of the inventory available for sale. $40,000 plus $180,000 is equal to $220,000. 
This is the retail value of all the inventory which was available for sale during the quarter. If we had sold all of this inventory, our sales revenue on our income statement would have been $220,000. Remember, our focus here is to estimate the ending inventory value for the statement of financial position, which is the cost of inventory. How do we use this information to do that? We can go back to the calculation of the ending inventory for Anita, where we see that the available for sale less the cost of goods sold is equal to the ending inventory, which is what we're trying to estimate. We're going to apply this to Sing Enterprises, but instead of using cost information, which we don't have and are trying to estimate, we're going to apply it to the retail value. Cost of goods sold at retail value is equal to sales revenue. Think about it. Sales revenue is just the number of units of inventory multiplied by the selling price. So sales revenue is really just the cost of goods sold at retail value. That means we can deduct sales revenue from the available for sale at retail in order to determine the ending inventory at retail. We know from the information in the question that sales revenue is $170,000 for the quarter. So we input that into our chart. Available for sale less sales revenue, remember that's the cost of goods sold at retail, is equal to the ending inventory at retail. So $220,000 minus $170,000 is equal to $50,000. This is the ending inventory at retail value. Now, how can we convert the retail value of ending inventory into the cost of ending inventory? Well, we can use our cost to retail ratio, which we learned about through the example with Anita Inc. When we were doing vertical analysis, we called it the cost to sales ratio, calculated as the cost of inventory divided by sales revenue. But we now know that sales revenue is really cost of goods sold at retail value. The formula is cost of inventory divided by sales revenue, the sales value of inventory. However, we can also call this the cost to retail ratio, which is the cost of inventory, cost of goods sold, divided by the retail value of inventory, which of course is sales revenue. Let's apply this concept to Sing Enterprises. We have the available for sale at cost, 154000 This would be the cost of goods sold if we sold all of the available for sale inventory. We have the available for sale at retail, 220000 This would be the sales revenue if we sold all of the available for sale inventory. Using our formula, cost of inventory, which is the available for sale at cost, divided by the retail value of inventory, which is the available for sale at retail, is equal to the cost to retail ratio. 154000 divided by 220000 is equal to 0.7 or multiply by 170%. What does this mean? It means that the cost of inventory is 70% of the sales price, the retail value. We can clearly see that there's a relationship between the retail value and the cost. The same relationship we see on the income statement when we use vertical analysis. How do we use this cost to retail ratio in our estimation of ending inventory? If we sold all the ending inventory at retail, we would have sales revenue of 50,000, which is the ending inventory at retail value. We know that the cost of this inventory is 70% of sales revenue. So we can simply multiply the ending inventory at retail 50,000 by the cost to retail ratio to get the ending inventory at cost. $50,000 multiplied by 70% is equal to $35,000, which is the cost of the ending inventory. So that is our estimated cost of ending inventory. We can now use this value to do any of the things we mentioned at the start of the video regarding the use of inventory estimation methods, including compare it to the physical inventory count to see if it's reasonable or to use for our interim financial statements. So are organizations permitted to use the retail inventory method to estimate the value of ending inventory on the statement of financial position? Absolutely. The retail inventory method is permitted under both IFRS and ASPE, as long as the results estimate the actual cost. It is also permitted for the CRA, Canada Revenue Agency. 
The example we completed of Sing Enterprises is a very basic example to introduce the retail inventory method. Keep in mind that this method can be far more complex, particularly when considering things such as markups, markup cancellations, markdowns, and markdown cancellations. But that's a topic for a future video. As always, thank you so much for watching.